Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro here. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to create your own random numbers in C++. So let's get started. Hey everyone, so we're going to be discussing generating random numbers in C++, but I do have a disclaimer. These are not true random numbers, but something called pseudo random numbers, which are very close. So using pseudo random numbers would be fine if you're making a simple game in C++ if you need to simply roll a dice or deal some cards, but I wouldn't use these for any like high level program that involves some security, but this would be fine just for a simple game. So let's begin. Now at the top of your program, this is what we're going to include. We're going to include two things. So include stdlib dot h and this is for the srand as well as the rand function. The other thing that we're going to include is time.h. And this allows us to work with the current time. All right, so the first step to creating a pseudo random number is that we are going to initialize a random seed based on the current time. This is what we can do to do that. Type in srand, then a set of parentheses, and within the parentheses, type in time, another set of parentheses, and the word null. So this is going to generate a random seed for us, and it's going to change based on the current time. There are other techniques of generating random seeds for pseudo-random numbers, but this is one that you'll commonly see, so that's why I'm introducing this method instead of others. All right, now we want to assign a random number to a variable, so we'll declare a variable such as number, and we're going to set this to rand parentheses. All right, and this next part is we're going to type in modulus and the range of numbers that we want to generate. So let's pretend that we want to roll a six-sided dice. We're going to type in modulus, then six, all right? So we're going to get a random number between zero and five, but it's a total of six numbers. So you always count zero when you're generating a random number. So if you want the numbers one through six, one thing you can do is just add one. So this will generate a random number between one and six for us. So let's actually display this just to test it. So we're going to see out whatever our number is. So let's run this. Okay, we got one. Let's try it again. Five and one last time and five again. All right, so we know that it's working then. So if you want to change this to a different number, you can. So for example, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, so we use polyhedral dice that might have like 20 sides or 12 sides. So if you want to roll a 20 side dice, I would just put 20 here and then plus one. So then I'll get the numbers one through 20. So let's try this now as if we're rolling for initiative. So we just crit failed, we got a one. Let's try it again. We got an 11 and we got a 20. So I have an exercise that we can work on. Let's generate three random numbers and display them kind of like a slot machine, but without all the fancy pictures. So what I'm going to do is just copy this statement and paste this a few times. And I'm going to change these variables to number one, number two, and number three. And maybe let's change the range from one through 10. And then I'll just display these. So number one, maybe I'll add a space between here. Number two, and add a space. And number three. Okay, let's try this. We got seven, three, and 10. Three, nine, and seven. And three, six, and two. So this will generate three random numbers between the ranges of one and 10. And if you know how to work with GUI components or some sort of visual, you could easily just replace those numbers with some sort of picture or other like graphical image if you do want to simulate like a slot machine of some sort. Uh, but this would be a good place to start to at least get the random numbers going. So just a quick summary that when you use this random function, you can use modulus and the range of numbers that you want to generate. If you want 100 numbers, you could change this to 100, but it's going to be the numbers zero through 99 that you get. So you can add like one to get one through 100. 
Otherwise, you can always add a higher number to this for some reason, like you can add 10, then all numbers that you generate would have 10 added to them then at that point. Uh, so it depends on the program you're really working on too. So you can use modulus, the range of numbers that you want. Then if you want to add something to that number, you can do so. Well, that's the basics of generating random numbers in C++, but I'm going to walk you guys through how to create a guessing game if you're interested. So let's delete all this and start over. I'll include all of this in the comments down below, so don't feel like you missed out on it. So before we get started, you'll want to be sure to include these two things, stdlib.h and time.h if you haven't done so already. Now we'll need to declare a few variables. We'll make an integer that will be our number that we generate, an integer that will be our response, and an integer that will serve as some sort of score. And we're going to initialize this right away and set it to zero. Now we'll need to initialize a random seed based on the current time. So s random, then time, parentheses, null. All right. And for our number, we're going to set this equal to rand, parentheses, modulus. And then if we want a random number between 1 and 10, we can just put 10 here plus 1. Otherwise, we can make this extreme and say like 100. So we have to guess a random number between 1 and 100. But let's start with 10 for now and keep it simple. All right, the next step, we're going to put all of this within a do while loop. So do then a set of curly brackets, and while, then our condition. So the condition is that we're going to continue guessing as long as our number does not equal whatever our response is. So there's a few lines that we're going to fill out within the do while loop. The first thing that we're going to do is prompt the user to enter in your first guess. Enter your eh, guess. 1 through 10. All right, then we will see in whatever the response is. Then we're going to use a few different if statements. So if our response is greater than the random number, what we're going to do here is see out that was too high. Okay, so then else if the response is less than the number, we will see out that was too low. All right, and lastly, we're going to put an else here because if the response is not greater than the number, and the response is not less than the number, then the response must be equal to the number. So then we will type in, or type, see out, that was correct. And I think I'm just missing a semicolon here. And after the else statement, we're going to increment our score counter by one. Then I also need a semicolon after the while loop here as well. All right, so then after we escape or exit the do while loop, we'll want to display the results. So I'm just going to see out number is whatever the number was, and then see out the amount of guesses that it took us. So we'll see out our score. I think I'm going to add a new line before this just to give us some space. You know what? I'm going to add a new line character here by guesses and after each of these C out statements as well because I forgot to do that. Okay, let's run this now. Okay, enter your guess 1 through 10. I'll guess 5 because it's near the middle. That was too high. Let's try maybe 3. That was still too high. One, that was too low, so I'm guessing it's two then. All right, that was correct. The number was two, and it took us four guesses. One, two, three, four. Let's try it one more time just to be sure it's working. So enter your guess. Let's try six. That was too high. Maybe three. That was too low. 
How about five? That was too high. And four, that was correct. The number is four and it took four guesses. All right, so that is a very basic guessing game. So that's the basics on random numbers in C++. If you would like a copy of all this code, I'll post it in the comments down below and pin it to the top. But yeah, that's the basics of pseudo random numbers in C++. Hey you, if you enjoyed this lesson, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.